Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. continue the discussion on the turbofan engine so we have looked at now the first we started of simple turbofan unmixed turbofan single and two wheel twin spool and then uh, in the last session we have looked at what happens when you have the mixing and we have looked at uh, the mixing with after burning process and that's pretty much uh, i mean uh, the mixed uh, turbofan engines is quite popular these days not only in military application also in civilian application um, uh, but for military application there would be added uh, component like afterburner uh, because that also is used to energize the, um, the mixed gases more which can give you sudden uh, acceleration or more maneuverability such some things like that so with that now we'll move to the another uh, kind of thing which um, like uh, uh, call the gear turbofan so gtf so gear turbofan so we'll just which may not go into too much of detail but just to give you an idea how they um, uh, look like so that you will have an idea so this is called the gear turbofan these are some of the example and this is the how the gear box looks like and this is uh, where it is used now here the fan is normally part of the low spool both fan and lpt are turning at the same speed however often it's a compromise because fan really operates more efficiently at low rotational speed while the rest of the low spool is more efficient at higher speed now there is a reduction gear which is put in between the components makes it possible the fan and the low spool to run in their optimum speed uh, so there is a, this is an example of that thing which is an uh, like coming elf 502r engine this produced by lycoming and then later on honeywell aerospace so this is one of the so this kind of gear turbofan has some advantages so if you see this kind of gear turbofan so it has advantages like it improves the fuel burn up compared to today's best engine so like when the fuel consumption is actually so better fuel consumption uh, or burning you can say so which can save lot of money for the aircraft industry or aviation industry every day nearly huge money 1.4 to 5 uh, million money which can be saved then also it reduce the carbon emission so it cuts the carbon emission by more than 3500 ton per aircraft per year so this is huge because this could be equivalent to effect of planning more than uh, almost 1 million roughly 1 million i mean uh, trees to be planted but it would be really to power aircraft well with the biofuel since it has successfully tested with alternative fuel so can use alternative fuel so these are the some of the advantages now when you say that also it reduces some noxes now concerning thermodynamic analysis of this gear turbofan if let's say eta gb is the mechanical efficiency of the gear box mechanical efficiency of uh, gear box then first let us say at the low spool is composed of fan and turbine so at low spool this has fan plus LPT 
So, the fan states are 2 and 3 and LPT states are uh, 6 and 7. So, if we go by the continuous numbering, then the energy balance from here what would give 1 plus beta m dot a C P C T naught 3 minus T naught 2 would be eta gearbox lambda 1 eta m 1 m dot a 1 plus f minus b C P halt 6 minus T naught 7, where b is m dot b by m dot a is the bleed air. Uh, then in the second case where the low pressure turbine that 6 and 7 drives the fan and low pressure compressor. So, that could be one scenario, other scenario let us say LPT drives the, so here the this is combining this, so that is what it is sending. Then the other case it could be let us say the that is possibility 1 other possibility fan plus LPC would be derived by LPT. So, in let us say this is state between 6 to 7 and this one is 2 and 10 and LPC is uh, 10 and 3 then one can write the energy balance 1 plus beta m dot a CPC T naught 10 minus T naught 2 plus m dot a C P C T naught 3 minus T naught 10, which is eta gearbox lambda 1 eta m 1 1 plus f minus b C P H T naught 6 minus T naught 7. Okay. Now, when you come to this also, this could be one option or this could be second option. So, these are or high pressure spool the air bleed from a station just downstream of HPC and prior to combustion chamber. So, what we can write in the high pressure side high pressure pool what we can write m dot a C P C T naught 4 minus T naught 3. So, which would be like lambda 2 eta m 2 m dot a 1 plus a minus b and C P H T naught 5 minus T naught 6. So, now this is where the air bleed from a station just downstream of HPC and before combustion chamber. Now, the other case if the air bleed is from the station within the HPC compressor. So, if air bleed is within HPC, so then that the pressure would be identified the pressure would be there P naught 3 B then the energy balance of the high pressure spool would give us m c p c t naught 3 b minus t naught 3 plus m dot a c p c 1 minus b t naught 4 minus t naught 3 b which is lambda 2 eta m 2 m dot a 1 plus f minus b c p h T naught 5 minus T naught 6. So, that is how you can do. Then now, we can move to another engine which is called the probably unmixed 3 spool. Okay. So, this that means, we have three different spool. So, there is an advantage associated with that. The advantage which are there, uh, this three spool configuration is that it has shorter modules 
and shafts. So, which result in a short train, so that means a small engine. So, single stage fan with no booster stages, it could have fewer overall compressor stages and fewer variable stages that reduces that C shorter uh, high pressure compressor, shorter HPC. Second, it could have higher efficiencies, efficiencies. Third, greater engine rigidity. Fourth, lighter weight. So, but there is a drawback of this three pool uh, engine or the main drawback, they are quite complex. So, disadvantage one can say or drawback is that complex to build and maintain. So, that is one of the, so some of the example like Rolls Royce RB211 is a three spool engine, then Rolls Royce Trent is a three spool engine. So, if we draw a engine like that, this is unmixed. So, we can have this and so this goes there. Mm, so, this comes so, which also goes like this. Now, then we have another pool which goes here, then we have the third one which comes like this, this is CC. So, that is uh, takes the nozzle okay. and this guy takes the nozzle here. So, this station could be A, this is 2. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and then finally, this is 12. And equally, if we draw the T S diagram, So, this will look like I have A, 2, 2 to 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, Then we get eleven, we get twelve. Okay, so that's how this diagram would like. Now, if we do the analysis, first the energy of the first pool. So fan plus LPT, which means one plus beta m dot a CPC. So, T 3 minus T 2 eta m 1 lambda 1 m dot a 1 plus f minus b C p h T naught 8 minus T naught 9 if there is a bleed. Second is the intermediate 
uh, spool which is IPC and IPT then what we could write m dot a CPC 4 minus 3 eta m 2 lambda 2 m dot a f minus b c p h 7 minus t naught uh, 8. So, and then third is the high pressure spool. So, which is high pressure spool which is H p c plus H p t that is m dot a c p c t naught 4 b plus 1 minus b m dot a c p c 5 minus t naught 4 b eta m 3 lambda 3 m dot a 1 plus f minus b 6. So, similarly like this is how the spool balancing can be done and uh, then rest of the procedure like uh, calculation of the other part and all this they will also follow the calculation like. So, we are not going the rest of the calculations because that would be pretty straightforward and we have done enough that kind of calculation. So, it would be good idea one has to pick up from there, but this will give you an idea. But obviously, here one has to note that this bleed position. So, depending on the bleed position, this balance equation may slightly deviate from here and there. So, that gives you a fair amount of idea. Now, we will move to the one which is another important topic is turbine based combined cycle. So, why we are doing so much of detail analysis on turbofan because turbofan engines are primarily is the engine which are I would say extensively used in today's life whether it is a civilian application or the uh, fighter applications. So, these are TBCC. So, this is of a layout of a hybrid or turbine based uh, combined cycle you can see which is uh, powering a future uh, basically this uh, one is powering a future supersonic or hypersonic uh, vehicle and this one also like that uh, which shows here and uh, that kind of and now so, this one illustrate uh, sort of hybrid engine uh, layout for lower moderate speed operation where turbojet or turbofan engine is active while ramjet and scramjet is inoperative. And this guy is uh, showing that ramjet or scramjet engine with inoperative uh, turbojet transformer during high speed operation. So, it can be looked in a different group this TBCC. So, if I put let us say TBCC here, then uh, there would be turbine based cycle and this side would be a ram based cycle. So, it is an hybrid engine where you used both turbine based cycle where you have the rotating component and ram based cycle which. So, here either we could have turbo jet or we could have turbo fan. So, then in this category we can have T J R J which is turbo jet and ram jet that is one then uh, turbo jet and scram jet which is T J S J turbo jet and scram jet and then we could have T J D J turbojet and dual combustion ramjet. So, these are three possibility then at the same time there could be T F R J which is turbofan and ramjet, turbofan scramjet 
and turbo fan dual uh, combustion uh, jet. So, this is that block, then here we can have ramjet, we can have scramjet and we can have dual combustion scramjet. Okay. So, now how this blocks can link this has this, this or this. So, the ramjet goes here and here, scramjet goes there and there, dual mode goes there and there. So, these are the sort of blocks that is uh, possible with this variance. So, these are one can see that in this hybrid TBCC, these are the six different variations which are possible that can have. Now, this block shows these combinations and then you can have a like multi stage vehicle which is operating on TBCC and you can see that kind of a vehicle. Uh, like this is a multi stage vehicle which is operating on TBCC. So, this is an example just to show here the if the vehicle is composed of two vehicles or two stages, you can see that one having the turbine engine to enhance the takeoff or acceleration to supersonic sp speed, where the second vehicle or the stage is driven by the ramjet or scramjet to the hypersonic or supersonic flight speed. Then uh, there is a, I mean obviously there is a history behind that and all this started with the supersonic aircraft programs and all these which started uh, when we had two airliner, one is Concord and then TPOLEV TU144 which were actually they were operational for uh, civilian purposes okay. and that is where the actually supersonic aircraft program started and then we started with uh, like 1947 and then we so 1964 I think uh, this SR 71 aircraft which came in. Um, so, you can see that image which is there on uh, locket SR 71 which was there flying Mach number was around 3 plus and uh, then uh, this guy was the T144 which was um, commercial supersonic first commercial supersonic transport aircraft it was in 1962. Uh, which was first constructed and this was uh, Soviet Union's aircraft and then later on we had other uh, aircraft in place like then you can see the this is a Concorde which came into so this is the British Aircraft Corporation which was jointly developed by the Eros Patel and the British Aircraft Corporation. It was 1969 when this came into the picture. The Then other countries are also in the, then there are hypersonic vehicles are also which are in place like uh, this is a Aurora hypersonic fighter, this is X-15, these engines are now being developed or getting tested in different hypersonic program. Now, the technology challenges of the future flight. So, if one someone has to look at the technology challenges for 
future flight. So, it has to have one is obviously environment there is environment is one important concern then benign effect on climate and atmospheric ozone third low landing and take off noise fourth low sonic boom fifth economic range payload fuel burn etc six low weight and low weight low empty weight fraction low empty weight fraction sat highly integrated airframe or propulsion unit systems or unit eight it could be low uh, low tsfc thrust specific fuel consumption nine long life 10 uh, certification for commercial operation, commercial operations, then acceptable for acceptable handling and ride qualities, 12 passenger and crew safety at high altitude, 13 reliability of advanced technologies, then 14 technical technical justification for revising regulations to allow supersonic operations over land. So, these are if someone has to list it down there are a lot of factors it may not include everything there could be uh, some other factors which may be but this is what one can think about important factors one has to and these are the technological challenges that one has for future flights i mean to have something in operation you have these challenges and the, both the uh, like uh, engine manufacturer or the aircraft industry or the rather the uh, aircraft manufacturer or engine manufacturer or in total the aviation industry they need to address. So, we will stop here and continue the discussion in the next lecture.